Let me go make a new scene, brand new scene, and we'll work on our ghost now. I'll go and put my render settings back to something like a square, just so that we can see the little guy that we're going to be building. So this is the ghost character here, these things. They are also used, or something similar like this is used in the in the promo page of the render contest, I believe, if I still have it here. Yep, there it is. If you go further to the bottom and look a bit on the on the um, background images, look at that, all these flying ghosts here, that is all done with a similar effect. And you can use as much high resolution as you like. You can put any type of object underneath it and then just use a simple plane, drape that over an object and it'll just go, you know, fall over. So I'll show you how to make that happen and an easy way that you can use this object and not deal with deforce once it's ready. And then as a finishing touch, we're gonna to go and add some cartoon eyes here on top of the ghost to make him look like, you know, he's a little, he's a little cute little guy who's looking around. So, ghost. I'm gonna use a sphere as the head part of the ghost. So let's create a new primitive. That's gonna be our guy's head. You can use anything you like. I don't even know how how tall this guy is going to be. That's essentially his head. Now we'll go and create a plane, plane primitive. I think I worked out that something around like three meters is going to be nice, so that there's a lot, there's enough drape, but it's not going to be uh, all that long. So three to four meters. One to two is a bit short, but three to four meters is going to work fine. And then the most important thing is that we need to give that studio enough geometry to work with. So 100 divisions will work fine. The default is one, and that's just one large polygon. So if you try to deforce that, it's not going to bend because there's nothing in which there, there aren't any segments in there that could bend and, and fold. So I'm going to use 100. You can use a few more. I wouldn't use any less. We can also add a subdivision surface modifier next to make it even smoother, but this is going to be this is going to be fine. That's going to be the poor guy's body. So we'll go and bring him up somewhere above the sphere, like so. And the magic now is that we'll apply, uh, well, we're going to call this guy ghost, first of all. And this is going to be the ghost's head here. So the trick here is that on the simulation settings tab, if you don't have it, dock it somewhere sensibly. You can go and use this little this uh, hamburger icon menu again and add a deforce dynamic surface modifier, just like I've explained in the previous live stream. So we add that, and this is now a deforce property set on our cloth. And in here, I'm going to do a few other adjustments. I could just go and hit simulate, but that's not going to simulate the whole cloth to the very bottom. That's only going to do something over 30 frames, which is probably not going to be enough for what we need. So yeah, look at that. It's not quite finished to be a ghost. It's kind of on the way to be a ghost, but it's not quite there yet. I might also go and dim down the filament viewport a little bit there. So just we can see it a little bit better. So instead then on simulation settings on the duration tab here, I'm going to go and switch this over to my uh, either to custom or to my play range timeline. I might just use the timeline and then uh, down here, I'll go and set the total play duration to 121 frames. That's 100. 20 frames, four seconds, and you know, one frame because it's the zeroth frame. And I'll go and hit simulate again. And now we'll get a longer simulation. And that means uh, we can go and pick whichever position we fancy best for our ghost. Because as it, as it kind of settles down there, we'll see more or less of, of a fold. There, that's, that's that. That's our ghost almost done. So I'll pick something along the lines of here, but to make it a bit more realistic, uh, this is now, it kind of looks the same from all sides. So what I'd like to do is make the ghost appear to be flying through the air. And as he would do that, there would be a bit of wind draft that goes and, and pushes against him. So the whole cloth would kind of fall to the back a little bit as if he's moving, wind blows against him. And that just makes for a bit of a more realistic ghost, I'm thinking. So let's see where we can, like, if you if you look at this little thing here and uh, look at the front, this is where I like my eyes to be. I'm going to put a wind node 
on here. So that'll go in from here. This is the front here. So in order to make that happen, I'll go and create one. I think I spoke about that in the previous stream as well. Create a new DeForce wind node and we'll apply the default settings. That just comes up as an empty node. And we'll go and move that out a little bit to kind of here. We can see that it's just about, we can see that it's a little bit small and that the fall off isn't quite long enough for the size of our object. So on the parameters tab under wind, with the deforce wind node selected, let's make the diameter a little bit larger to something like that. That'll blow against the whole guy, maybe a little bit more, kind of 120, that'll, that'll do the trick. And this first circle here, this is the beginning, this is where the fall off starts, and then this is where the fall off ends, and then after that there's no more wind effect. I'm going to go and make the fall off a little bit larger so that it all blows against this guy, that there's no cutoff here. Then we're just going to go and make fall off start a little bit longer so that this first circle here moves beyond my ghost. There. And then all I maybe need is to move this guy up a little bit. We'll see what that does. Just out of curiosity and if it doesn't work well i'm thinking i might just go and angle the wind node up a little bit i kind of like that there's also the wind strength that we're not entirely sure about and i can see it wafting a little bit it's a tiny disturbance there getting in the right direction yeah i'm thinking i'm going to go and make it a bit stronger so that's just the wind node on the strength here let's try 10 that's twice as much and i might also go and angle this guy up a bit like so. That might just be a little bit more realistic. Perhaps. It's all a bit trial and error, that. <laughs> it's getting there, it's getting there. I think I might move it down a little bit. And also maybe the wind strength was a little bit much, so maybe I'll give it eight. But you get the principle. Play around with it as much as you like. I think I might settle for whatever comes out next because we have other stuff to do. In the original demo image that I've made, I've actually, I didn't use a square piece of cloth, I used a round one. But it turned out that was more difficult to create than I thought. So uh, Blender didn't like remeshing it and bringing it into Death Studio, it's just none of that really worked. It's kind of, it's a little off center here, I might just go and try the same thing again. And just move this guy slightly further over to the right. And try this again. Yeah, so in the end I ended up in Marvelous Designer, making a piece of cloth in Marvelous Designer. And I thought, you know, that adds a, adds a whole different level of complexity. I'm not going to do that. So hopefully this is going to be our ghost. He's kind of nice. It's still, it's still hitting it on the side there a little bit. Let me go and try this one more time, moving this over here. A lot of trial and error. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll work it out. That is pretty much in the center. I think we're settling on on this. That is a beautiful ghost and he wafts around. That's very nice. You can even animate him by just doing this and <laughs> we're not going to do that. I'm just going to use the last frame. I think that looked very nice. Pick any frame you like with the timeline and pick the one that you fancy. And now we're going to go first of all save this as a scene under characters here just so that I have this whole thing with deforce. I'll save it as ghost deforce just so that I have it as a separate scene in there somewhere but I'm not going to use this to import into my master scene there's a lot of other things that I want to do to my little ghost here so the first one is that I will export this little guy out as an obj and that means I can go and bring it in again I'm going to go make all these other parts here invisible you don't really have to do that um, you can just go and select the ghost and then export him as an obj or as an obj I'll go and do that. And this now goes into my Halloween stream. And I'm going to make another folder in here that I'll call OBJs. I do that because it's just a habit I get into that whenever I have any intermediate objects that I like to save out, I like to do that. I'll call this guy Ghost, save him out. And we can just use the Dash Studio defaults here and then go and accept. That's that. Since I have saved my scene, I can now go and get rid of essentially everything, put my playhead back on the first frame and be done with the timeline and import the OBJ again. And I'm doing that so that the ghost 
itself is now is now one single object that I can save as a subscene and do other things with. That's him. Notice that now that he's exported, I can. there's nothing on the timeline anymore. If I needed to do any animation bits and pieces, I don't have to worry about freezing the animation. There's no defaults on this thing anymore. It's just a static object now. So again, it makes my, uh, my life a lot easier on this. Let's see what he looks like in iRay, and then we'll add some eyes on it and tweak his material so that he's a little bit translucent and emits a little bit of light. So it's a little bit like on our previous scene, I'm using the default environment intensity. I might just turn that down to 0.3, just so that it's a bit uh, a bit darker. So you can see he's not he's a little bit jagged. And if you want to do something about that, just apply a subdivision surface modifier. That'll get rid of all these jaggies here. Select the item first, then go under Edit, Object, Geometry and convert it to sub D. And that essentially applies that subdivision surface modifier. Now all the folds are really jitter free and jaggy free. And it also gives you now the option on, on the parameters under mesh resolution to switch from high resolution to base resolution. So now we have the option on him. I'll leave base on for now and we'll see if it's necessary to use it. Let's tweak the material in a little bit after we've made the eyes.